This video was brought to you by Blinkist. Today, I want to share 22 things I no longer buy. Even as I pursue minimalism, I gotta be real, I still shop. And there's this gradual trickle in of belongings into my home. I'm trying to reduce that flow. I'm constantly thinking about how I can shop less. And I think being more intentional about what I'm not buying anymore, as well as getting excited about the idea of not buying certain things helps me reduce that trickle. I also wanna acknowledge that when I say I'm no longer buying these, it means right now I'm not buying them. It doesn't mean I never have or that I never will, just to be truly real with you. Also, part of the point of this video is to talk about my reasoning or themes around buying less so that if you have equivalents in your life, you can identify them and reduce your spending. But in no way am I trying to tell you you shouldn't buy these things. You need to figure out the right balance for you. So no judgment here. This is just what I'm working on right now. The first thing I'm no longer buying is cable. Cable is often surprisingly expensive. Yes, options often start as low as $30, but a review of public data created by decisiondata.org found that the average cable package cost is actually around $217. That amount per month is more than most households actually spend on all other utilities combined. It's incredible how these packages have these add-ons or different options that just increase the price exponentially. And I find that the streaming services that I use cost far less and still provide me with what I want. And that way too with subscription services, sometimes if I'm like really into a kick with one show, I can cancel some other subscriptions and then return to them when I wanna gain access to them again. It's just nice to have more control over exactly what you wanna be watching and what you're specifically paying for. The second thing I'm no longer buying are trendy accessories. I think in general, as I get older, I realize how much trends really don't tend to last that long. I think also with social media these days and fast fashion, trends move even more quickly. So when you buy something, they're more likely to go out of style that much faster. So I think just being aware about when I'm buying a trend and making sure that it's something that I will enjoy wearing even after that trend ends is really important for me in reducing my shopping. The third thing I'm not buying is a smartwatch. I just feel like smartwatches make it much less likely that I can put the rest of the world away, not be bothered by texts and just be in the moment. And again, no judgment to you if you have a smartwatch, that's totally reasonable. But for me, I just like to be able to take my phone and like set it on the shelf for a while, literally, and go do something for a bit of time. But if it's on my watch, it's harder to do that. I may change my mind at some point and find other reasons why I want a smartwatch. But for now, I really think that the risks outweigh the benefits. And that's a general theme with these belongings. It's like, are the benefits really outweighing the risks or negative aspects of having the item? And it can even be as simple as just like having to take care of the belonging and put it somewhere and have it with all your other stuff that creates more chaos in your life. Just consider, is it really worth the cost of the space in my life, the time, the energy that I put into this object? The fourth thing I'm not buying is an iPad. I feel like, again, it's just that issue of having another piece of technology that's distracting, and maybe even more importantly, how often will I actually use it? I just feel like the iPad is redundant to all the other technology we have. A fifth thing I'm not buying is shaving cream. I just find that a lot of good sudsy soap does just as good of a job for me. And I feel like shaving cream is an example of one of those products that's so niche, that's so specific, it can really only be used for what it is. But with soap, for example, I can use that for a lot of different things. So I think sometimes it's those specific products that maybe we can get by without. A sixth thing I'm not buying are extremely expensive designer purses or handbags. I'll also admit I'm not in the know about designer handbags, so maybe it's just not really a passion of mine. But simply put, I think they jack up the prices quite a bit. And I think sometimes those purses that are just those simple average bags are the ones I end up using the most. I'm not afraid to have them get dirty or get marks on them or to wear them in the rain. I just think it's more practical. Now I have purchased some, I guess what would be technically considered designer handbags and that they're designed by somebody, but usually it's more of like a startup type place. But I don't tend to purchase from like Prada, Chanel, Louis Vuitton. I feel like those companies are doing just fine without me. I also think this brings up the theme of status. 
And when are we buying something to show that we can afford it or to show some kind of status or importance versus when are we buying something because we actually like it? I think sometimes labels and designer labels get to that space where it's just about showing off. And for me, I just don't think it's worth my hard earned money to funnel into something that just has like a label on it to say something about myself. Again though, if this is your passion and you really just appreciate a high quality bag, no judgment. This is just my take. But I guess for me, I'm getting to a place in life where I'm trying to focus more on enjoying the relationships I have, investing in them, as opposed to trying to seem cool to a bunch of new people. And I'm thinking a lot more about curating how I spend my time and what I put my energy into. And speaking of kind of curating how I'm spending my time, I think that the sponsor of this video, Blinkist, really fits in with that. Blinkist helps you to discover and understand powerful ideas from books and podcasts in a short amount of time. Basically, this app creates short synopses or what they call blinks, and they have more than 5,000 titles from 27 categories, including from recent bestsellers. And one way I also like to use it is to just get a sense for what a book is generally talking about so that I can decide whether it's worth my time to go deeper and actually read the full book. What's cool is that these blinks are also offered in text or via audio, so you just hit play and listen. I also have to admit they have some great titles on minimalism, including Digital Minimalism, Choosing a Focused Life in a Noisy World, Minimalist Parenting, and The Joy of Less. Right now, Blinkist has a special offer for my audience. Click the link in my description box below for a seven day free trial and then 25% off a premium membership. Anyway, just wanted to share that with you all. But the seventh thing I'm no longer buying are plastic bottles. I can get water in many different ways. And what I found is that I actually prefer to drink water out of a thermos that has some like insulation to it so that I can have water and ice and even some lemon in it. I just find that to be way more enjoyable than drinking out of plastic. And obviously more importantly, it's better for the environment. An eighth thing I'm no longer buying are shirts that are high maintenance to wear in some way, like having to wear an undershirt underneath. I used to always buy my clothes based on what I just thought was cutest. And what I found even for things as simple as your tops, like you would think like most tops are comfortable, but I feel like sometimes when I have to wear a cami underneath, I end up just not using that shirt much or I end up feeling uncomfortable all day. So now I only buy shirts or tops that are pretty easy to put on or if they do require some kind of undershirt that I have a setup that's extremely comfortable for me. A ninth thing I no longer buy are seasonal decorations. I already have a Christmas tree that I use every year. Yes, it's artificial, but it does the trick and it's really easy for me. And yes, maybe I have a few other decorations things. But other than that, I really am not buying any more seasonal decorations because what I found is that it actually ends up being a really common gift I receive from family members or friends. And then I end up having all this stuff I bought in addition to the gifts. So I think it's just better for me not to buy any more seasonal decorations. Plus then I have to keep them in storage all year and that takes up more space. I also noticed that they don't bring me that much joy. Like I think for some people, seasonal decorations mean a lot and just spice up their lives. But for me, I just don't get that excited. So I've decided to not purchase more of that. Again, I'm sure at some point in all life I'll purchase more, but for now I'm taking a break. 10th, I don't buy anything just because it's on sale anymore. I always ask myself the question, would I be willing to buy this if it were full price? And then I decide whether or not to buy it. I totally did this in the past where I would just buy things on principle because they were on sale and I kind of liked them, but I found that I end up saving more money if I delay purchases and really consider the pros and cons of actually owning the item, especially after all the declutters I've done. I don't want to be buying a bunch of new stuff just because it's on sale only to force myself to put all the energy into even more decluttering. 11th, I no longer buy specific new hair gadgets. I have a blow dryer, I have a curling iron, but other than that, I'm not gonna be buying any kind of like crimpers or secondary types of curlers or that sort of thing. I have what works for me and I don't need to keep purchasing all these very specific gadgets. I guess it comes back to that theme of like having a specific thing for each task. If you can use one thing in multiple ways, it's gonna be a lot more beneficial. And I wanna say, I know this one sounds very basic, but I was super tempted to buy that like new Dyson hair curler thing that dries and curls your hair at the same time. So cool, 
But you know what? I already have a system that works for me and I don't need that. A 12th thing I don't currently buy are essential oils. And I think part of it is that there are a lot of potentially shady companies like MLMs around essential oils that don't really have any scientific evidence base for the claims they're making. But even more importantly, I find them to be extremely expensive and I have other more affordable ways of making a great ambiance, like putting on some really good music or turning on the fireplace. I also already have a bunch of candles and I know essential oils are different, but I like candles better and I already have them. So I'm not gonna buy essential oils just because it's a fad right now. A 13th thing I'm no longer buying are new plants. And yes, I'm guessing at some point I'll buy more plants, but for now I've got so many and I need to focus on tending to them. Plus what I've noticed is that it's really, really fun to actually propagate them and to make one plant into two, into three. So I've been having more fun with playing around with that. Not to mention, I have spent probably way too much money on plants, but I just need to take a break and stop where I am with that for now. I will admit, when I say this, I'm talking like indoor plants. I might have to buy some outdoor stuff for our yard just because now we're homeowners and I'm getting used to having a garden space. The 14th thing I'm no longer buying are uncomfortable shoes. I'm over it. I'm just done with buying super high heels that give me blisters that make me wanna cry at the end of the night, or even buying regular shoes that just look cool but don't feel quite right. I've also found that if I wait and hold out for something that is genuinely comfortable, I can find a comfortable pair of shoes in almost any category, even including high heels. So I think it's about holding out for what works for my feet and my lifestyle. A 15th thing I'm not buying are extra extra makeup steps. I don't really use face primer. I pretty much just use like a face oil and then I'll use my foundation, possibly a serum. I guess now I'm, I do have a lot of makeup steps so maybe I can't talk, but I'm just trying to keep it as simple and as basic as I can. And I think that you can end up buying so many products for makeup that it can just keep going and going and going. And I do think that there is something to be said for makeup as self-care. Like I'm all for purchasing makeup if it really fills that niche of like self-care for you. And sometimes it does for me too. But I think I've been focusing more on simplifying my routine as opposed to making it more complicated, even within that shopping for makeup if that makes sense. I wanna find products that are multi-purpose and that do what I need to do without spending a bunch of time in the morning. A 16th thing I'm no longer buying is really cheap jewelry. I remember back in grad school where I was really penny pinching and I would go to like CVS or Walgreens and buy jewelry there and then I would wear it like once or twice and then it would get tarnished and gross. But then I would have to rebuy it and spend even more money on jewelry. So instead I've really focused on buying something just once every once in a while and having it be a piece that will stand the test of time. And also, can I just say what I'm talking about here is getting jewelry that works for me in the context of my life. Like if for you right now, what you can afford is CVS jewelry, you do that. But I also think that we can be thoughtful about what we buy and like whether it is actually going to last for us and is actually worth the money. I'm also all for getting a good deal. Like sometimes if we're patient, we can get something just as affordable or cheap without it being so cheap. If you know what I mean, like having better quality stuff for roughly the same price, but I think it's often about patience and waiting for those sales. So again, no judgment about where you shop for your jewelry, but I guess I'm just saying I've had some bad experiences with certain jewelry pieces that I've just impulsively bought that were really cheap, and I'm trying to be way more thoughtful about it. The 17th thing I'm not paying for is regularly getting my nails done. Yes, maybe once in a blue moon, if it's like a bonding experience or some kind of event, I will get them done, but I'm not getting them done on my own dime on a regular basis. I can either keep my nails really natural or paint them myself. An 18th thing I'm no longer buying is excessive nail polish. I literally have two or three colors total that I like that work for me 
and that's all I need. Now for you, maybe you enjoy switching it up a lot and adding a lot of color, so this might not apply to you. But for me, I've realized that there are certain colors that I just like better on my nails and I don't wanna mess with that. So I guess a theme with this one is just like find what you like, what works for you, and don't feel like just because other people like more options than you do that you should want more options. So maybe it's not nail polish, but think about if there's something in your life that you're quite content with only having one or two options. A 19th thing I'm no longer buying are extra knickknacks or decor pieces. And I'm sure eventually I will, but I guess what I've realized is that so often when I buy little things, little trinkets to just like set on shelves, they end up fading into the background. After a while, I don't even notice them. And sometimes I feel like with those things, less is more. A 20th thing I'm no longer buying are jumpsuits. And basically I already have a couple jumpsuits that work great for me that I really like. And I simply don't need to keep purchasing new ones over and over again. A 21st thing I've decided to stop purchasing are additional hangers. I've realized I have a lot of these. Now, if you need hangers, that's a different story, but I have so many and sometimes it's like, I just end up buying more hangers once I fill them up and then my closet gets more and more cramped. Whereas if I just have a set number of hangers, it helps me follow a one in one out type of rule. Not that I really truly follow a one in one out rule. I'm not strict about that, but I think just keeping my closet to have a set number of hangers helps me keep my wardrobe a little bit more minimized. And last but not least, I no longer buy souvenirs. And I'm not saying I'll never buy anything when I'm on a trip, but I'm not gonna buy souvenirs just for the sake of buying a souvenir. Like the whole idea that we're supposed to purchase items to remember a trip is just all backwards. Like it goes back to that problem that I think we have in our society of connecting memories and meaning and emotions with stuff. Like I think we need to disentangle those two things. Just because I don't have a belonging from that trip doesn't mean I won't remember it. There are other ways to remember the trip, like just reminiscing about trips with a loved one or taking photos and looking through photos. I don't need a souvenir to prove to myself that I've had a trip. Anyway, hopefully some of these examples got your wheels turning, got you thinking about what you might wanna stop buying. Again, no judgment if you buy these things. I may buy these things again in the future, but these are just the things that I'm currently trying not to buy, at least for the time being. I also think some of these I instinctually stopped buying, but I didn't really notice it until I reflected on it. So I actually think this is a useful exercise in noticing maybe the progress you've made on a minimalism journey if you're on one, because sometimes you do tend to buy less as you're decluttering and thinking about shopping less, and doing this kind of exercise in your own life can be really satisfying in seeing the progress you've made. Anyway, that's most of what I have for you today, but if you're interested in that Blinkist app I mentioned, you can hit the link in the description box below. And if you ended up enjoying this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Doing that helps it get out to more people. It's a great, simple way for you to help support the channel. So if you can take that moment just to hit the thumbs up button, I would really appreciate it. You can also subscribe below for more content like this. And I also have my Instagram and Patreon linked down below. Thanks so much for spending this little bit of time with me and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.